Welcome everyone. I'll give folks a moment to arrive. How are you doing? Still under quarantine. Also, <laughs> just to make sure, can you guys hear me? Because last time we had some issues with that. And I, the video looks all right so far. So I'll just wait for confirmation that you can hear me and see me okay, and then I will begin. Yes, excellent. Okay, so today what I have in mind is to draw faces for imagination using Andrew Loomis's method, which I hope some of you are familiar with. And this is, an, this is an experiment, this format. I'm still trying things out. And how to put it? I am doing this because I want to rekindle my love for drawing and painting and art making in general. So I want to show you a little bit of my background in the form of past artworks. You should see my screen now. Let me just check. This will be headache inducing. Just a second. Okay, <laughs> looks good. So the nerd that I am, I have scanned and photographed all the artwork that I've done since I guess 2001 methodically, systematically. And before that, it's childhood drawings, things like this. But if you go, let's say 2001, well, uh, that's digital. Let's go a bit further. So here's different artworks from that year. I'll number it and uh, sort it chronologically so I can look through what I have actually done. And there's a trend that I've noticed that I don't like that much. But let me give you a quick tour. So this is, I was born in 1985. These are drawings from the 1990s, so age five, six, seven, and they might look like drawings that you have done. Beautiful, happy world. There are some that are less happy. <laughs> this is an angel. Apparently, looks like he's in some sort of device flying around. More UFOs. Let's see. <laughs> so just making marks and I was really exploring at this point, just drawing for the joy of drawing and seeing what comes out on the page. This actually is from my sister, <laughs> an eagle. Anyway, so this is early childhood. Then. 1998, so I was 13, I found a program called Price. Sorry, this is kind of small here. Price 3D. I don't know if any of you know this program. It blew my mind. So we had just gotten a computer and I think my uncle found this program. And you could make simple forms like cubes and cylinders 
and spheres and put them together, move them around, stretch them and give them a material. So there were different presets for different materials, rock and water. And I was just playing, making different objects with these primitive geometric forms and different surfaces. So here are some of these images and I'm kind of composing and storytelling and you could duplicate a model once you've built it. <laughs> these are just straight out of the, that program. You could put skies there, different presets. So really not that much customization. It was very limited in the way of what you can do, but you can make simple forms, move them around and put them together, kind of like Lego, which was a big thing for me, Lego growing up. There was terrain generator, which was super fun. Making mountains just with random patterns. Anyway, so I kind of started doing digital art pretty early on, age 13. I just realized this today when I was looking through these images. And then I found Photoshop in 2001. So I would have been 16, I guess. And here my, so my, I think this is my very, very first Photoshop artwork <laughs> in an early version of Photoshop. And it was again, this, this sense for me of exploring like, wow, there's so many buttons here. I have no idea what they do. What happens when I click here? Ugh, that looks horrible. Okay, go back. And what happens if I click here and just going clicking every button <laughs> in the program to see what comes out of it. <laughs> we had a little company called YOP, your online partner for making websites. It didn't go anywhere, but it was fun. Anyway, so just Photoshop filters. Um, yeah, starting with a, a base color and then going with filters and <laughs> the power <laughs> and playing with filters, not really drawing anything. I didn't have a Wacom tablet, I think at that point, just the mouse and Photoshop. And from that, I started gradually using more images, photographs that I found online, stock images. And from doing more graphic design and filter digital art, I was starting to f miss my ability of drawing because I wanted to edit these photographs. So if we go one year further, something like this. I did this all on my laptop. Actually, not even, wow, there was not even a trackpad on the laptop. It had one of those tiny joysticks. So I did these lines with the joystick on the laptop, watching the cursor go over. But you can see there's more photographs now coming together. It's more becoming image editing than, actually, than just filters. Uh, what else? Taking different pictures of my friend and then compositing them together. And I started to get little jobs of doing graphic design for posters, for concerts. <laughs> and here there's a little bit of drawing. So I'm starting to create things myself. I'm not just putting things together, but I'm starting to draw myself. And this was a little highlight. I made a t-shirt design for a hardcore heavy metal, or maybe not heavy metal, but hardcore band. And this image was in a newspaper and my design was on the clothing, which just blew my mind. <laughs> And then starting, I think this is when I got a Wacom tablet, so I could actually draw on the computer. 
and I really noticed how limited I am with my drawing. So I started drawing every day. It was a New Year's resolution on the 1st of January 2004. And I started numbering the drawings and scanning, photographing them. So this is when it all became more serious. And Andrew Loomis was really the, the thing I started with, the, his method of, of drawing heads. And when I thought about what I would like to do in these Monday sessions where we draw together, I realized I can do anything I want, right? This is my <laughs> space. So I should do something that I enjoy. And I thought about what I enjoy and drawing heads is definitely something that throughout the years I keep coming back to. Just doodling in my sketchbook, drawing heads, drawing faces. And I show these here to share that it's a journey. If you get frustrated, we all get frustrated. It's you have to do a lot of work. So if I zoom out here, uh, let's go here. This is the first year of drawing more seriously every day. And I did, I think about two per day. Uh, let's do one in the middle, just randomly. <laughs> So there's some digital, some traditional, but mostly heads and faces. My first oil painting. <laughs> Actually, it's a multimedia experiment. There's some spray paint as well, and maybe some acrylics of charcoal. Yeah. Uh, let's go towards the end, maybe here. into bodies slowly and then this was a more intense project copying one of Bames figure drawings or anatomy drawings actually so that's 2004 that's a while ago as we go through I'm not going <laughs> to share all of these with you but as I looked through these folders, these years of artwork. You can see when I started to study painting at the Academy in Florence, it's getting very technical, like studying ballet or classical music. So I'm doing these exercises to train my brain to see proportions. So I do these lines on the right and then I bring them over on top of the artwork and I see how close I got with my block in lines and I color code just like this. This is like playing the keys on the piano, dun 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 dun, like scales, just to get the dexterity of your fingers. In this case, the dexterity of the fingers for drawing, but also for your mind to be able to see proportions more accurately. And there's many, 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 many <laughs> of these that I've done. So I wanna share that it takes a lot of work, you know, and it's good if you enjoy the work and I think I enjoyed it mostly. But one thing I realized is, as I'm going through these is that there's less and less personal work and just work for the joy of drawing. Uh, if you go even further, there's a book project I worked on. So you can see that there's less, there's fewer images now in this year. Let's go down. So that's the whole year. And we go two years further. That's the whole year now. And some of this is even web design. And then 2017, that's the whole year. So <laughs> this makes me kind of sad, you know, there's very little work being produced. Um, to be fair to myself, I worked a lot creatively for my educational materials. The shading course or mastering light and form, that's also my artwork. I'm also being creative there. But there's not many drawings. Here there are some more 
and again a lot of heads these are in charcoal quite big just for imagination and these i like too more heads here i started with watercolor just making a random mark and then pulling out things from the chaos being more free with paint not, not so tight and controlled as i did in the academic work <laughs> things like this so i feel like i don't do this enough and you might be in different places you might be studying art right now or you might be making a living as an artist you're all in different spots but for me I th for many years i haven't really done art for art's sake i feel like or i've been i had to force myself to do it just experimenting exploring last year <laughs> more heads in a way doing anatomy studies in seabrush building my own skull sorry for going a bit fast and then doing an crochet actually digitally building all the muscles to go more deeply into the face to understand all the different parts that create a face and discovering blender blender 2.8 it's an amazing tool <laughs> so i did a tutorial and then i let myself get carried away these i added these sprinkles and they started looking like little creatures poking out from the frosting so i added this gathering of sprinkles i don't know what it is it's probably not going to lead to anything but i think these are important experiments to just be open to see whatever comes up and let yourself surprise you or let you surprise yourself this was from life at barcelona academy joining the students for a day or two digital portrait painting and in this year <laughs> has been not much some blender experiments but yeah so the the overall tendency of of less and less and less and less artwork created and my realization that yeah i don't do much art for art's sake so <laughs> What we're doing today is kind of for me time to make art again for art's sake to just play and explore and some sessions i might just fire up photoshop and make a mess and see what happens and some days are going to be more like a class i think uh, today will be a bit more like a class just to start and we're going to use Andrew Loomis's method and just draw a few heads together maybe I'll get into details with how to draw noses and ears and mouths and things like this we'll see let me catch up with the chat for a second question about where I'm from I'm from Switzerland born in Austria grew up in Switzerland and then lived in Italy for a while, in the US, and now in Spain. <laughs> yes, the rubber joysticks. Yeah, when you have a full-time job, personal work takes a back seat, sure. But my full-time job is related to my personal work so I think Andrew Loomis's book fun with a pencil was the first art book 
and Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, I think, by Betty Edwards. I kind of started with those two. But today is going to be more about Loomis. So to honor Andrew Loomis, just briefly, he was born in 1892 in New York State and spent most of his time with his working life in Chicago, where he was teaching and also working as an illustrator. If you don't know his books, definitely check them out. Andrew Loomis, they're phenomenal. And they're so encouraging. That's the thing that I really enjoyed about them. He's an amazing artist, but the books, in the books, he talks to you like a friend. Hey, I can do it, you can do it. Let's just go step by step together. So I have a camera set up where you can hopefully see my table here. And this is page one, I think, of fun with a pencil. And he says, all that you need to know is to be able to draw a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Any, <laughs> it can be as lopsided as the family budget and still work out. So if you can't draw a perfect circle, that's totally fine. That's not required. So right now take a pencil or a mark making tool it can be a pen or anything else and some paper and let's draw together for a bit. I'll give you a second to gather those things. And maybe I can draw some circles here. You can make some uh, potato shapes as well. It actually all works in your favor because you get some interesting characters out of that. I encourage you not to press too hard right now. So don't make a super dark lines. Right now we're kind of creating a big shape of our face of our head. I'm going to check the chat for a second. Okay. So it seems like there's some lag, but I hope we're doing okay in terms of the connection speed. I adjusted some settings compared to last time. I hope it's going to be fairly smooth today. But if there are issues, please let me know in the chat. So next step once you have these potatoes is to add noses and you don't even have to think about them as noses you can just think of adding little circles somewhere or you can make a big circle <laughs> if you want or a tiny circle it can be attached within or close to this this potato shape that you have you can place it anywhere Again, press lightly, don't press too hard. And then we will add equator lines. This might feel a bit more intimidating, but don't worry about it. Just do an estimation. So the little sphere, the little circle is going to be the nose. Now we're going to draw a center line of the head. This one is a little bit off centered. We can kind of think that this face is looking down. So the center line is going to be something like this. Here we can barely see it, maybe like that. Okay, and then let's go the other direction as well, horizontally. If you're feeling yourself getting tense, relax, it's all good. I've spent so many days trying to draw the correct perspective on these heads. I got so frustrated, but 
there's no point. We're drawing. It can be fun. So try to indicate a little bit of perspective, up or looking up or looking down. Actually, it could be nice to have that center line going across the nose as well. Eh, not so important. Okay, I hope you have a bunch of circles or potatoes with noses and those two axes drawn. Oh, I'm missing one. There. Now let's draw two lines. One line horizontally above the nose and one below. And maybe you can already guess what that's going to be. Keep those light. We're going to draw on top. If you can, follow the roundness of the form, but otherwise you can keep them straight as well. And you can play with the proportions. So I'll reveal the purpose of these lines. The bottom one is the mouth, the top one is the eyes. So if I place the eyes here, I can place the mouth here, or I can place the mouth down here, and it will be quite a different character. And maybe you can already visualize before you draw the line a little bit what that personality is going to feel like. And you can play on purpose with stretching things out. So here I'm going to make the eyes very far from each other. On the next one, I'll place them very close to each other. Okay, and now freestyle. Add some eyes and the mouth. Uh, I wish I could bring this closer. Let's see if this works. I can't move my camera. can add an eye and then make him look to the right by adding the pupil there. You can give them big eyelids like this. Or small eyelids. like that. It helps a lot to add personality if you're making the pupils go left or right or up or down or look at the viewer like in the this one he's kind of looking at us though maybe a bit to the right there. And if you're an artist who draws from life and wants to draw realistic portraits, doing this is still going to help you a lot because it will show you where the gaps are in your understanding. If you can draw all these things from imagination, you will see much more things when you're drawing from life. We can also draw big eyeballs and then the dots become the pupils. So now we have a surprised potato face. The eyebrows are extremely expressive. So if you bring them down, you get something critical or angry. If you bring them up, or maybe like this, one up and one down, you're getting something suspicious or also critical the 
this one's missing a mouth. Let's give him, him an open mouth. Otherwise, for the mouths, I like to start with the corners of the mouth and make them a little bit darker because that's where usually shadow happens in the corners of the mouth. Let me do a bigger mouth somewhere here. There's a nice trick with a bird in its nest. I don't know if you've seen this before. If you have a straight line for the division between the lips, you can do... this, which is like a bird shape. Maybe you've drawn that as a kid. And on the bottom, we can draw a nest shape. So it's going in in the center on the top and bottom. You can draw it as two spheres or two stretched eggs like this, and then connect them at the bottom and leave the sides open. So here and here, it's better not to draw that line uh, darkly and close that shape because this is a soft form connecting from the mass of the lower lip into the corner of the mouth. So if you have the corners, you can show that middle here, which is overlapping the bottom lip so there's a fullness here, which goes on top of the bottom lip. Or you can make very thin lips, just having a line and a little bit of shadow underneath the bottom lip. This one, we really have to show the nostrils because we're looking at it from below. So if we divide the nose in half, we can cut out nostrils here and here. And that's actually interesting because the middle part of the nose which is called, I forget, but it runs into the lips. And this part, I remember, is called the philtrum. So let's erase that. Maybe someone can throw the name, the anatomical name of the middle part of the nose into the chat. So the nose is connected with the mouth through the philtrum. I also like to draw little contour lines like I just did there. It's probably very small for you guys. See in here? Very subtle. I followed the form with little section lines or contour lines to show that fullness of the lips. Now, what's missing? Something important is missing. Hair and ears. <laughs> Probably ears first. To get the to find the ears, we go and add another section line, which goes through the center here. This can be a bit more tricky, but just estimate it. It's all good. 
I think I have an image also from Loomis. Let me see. This is a bit more uh, constructive, but you can see right now I'm drawing this line and the ear is attached right there. It's coming off of this line. So here as well, side of the gene of the cheek or jaw, and that's where the ear comes off of. drawn a lot of these in pretty frontal view so we're not going to see much of that third section line but that's okay if we're looking frontally the section line is exactly the same as the contour so to place the ears a helpful hint is to go from the level of the eyebrows to the level of the nose Maybe this is also here. No, okay, so we'll do it here. Level of eyebrows and level of nose. So the ears will be in there. You can think of ears as half of a heart shape. If you take a heart and you cut it apart, you have half of it and half a heart is a great place to start drawing an ear I always place the tragus first that's this little shape here that's overlapping you can touch it on yourself it's attached to the side of your head that little fleshy bit from here Take a loop down. Mm, let me see if I can get this closer to... Not easily, but let me try... Like this. No. Let's do the opposite. This might all come crashing down, but... <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so... Tragus, ear opening, so this little notch here. Anti tragus, another little fleshy form. Haha, <laughs> let's use this instead. Or in addition. And I'm sorry it's mirrored now. So let me start actually again the other side. Or better, <laughs> like this. Half a heart. Tragus. Ear opening. This little notch here. Anti tragus, that's this guy. Then I go up and around to create the concha, this depression which is shell like. Then I'm going to draw the helix coming out here. So it's starting inside here, going up and around and stopping just above that anti-tragus, usually. Then just two things left, a little separation up here of the anti-helix. That's this shape coming up as one and then splitting into two branches. So to show those two branches, some people have that more pronounced than others, but I like to indicate that separation and then come around like this and add a little bit of shading there and you have an ear this is how i draw an ear pretty much 
always when I draw from imagination and I just vary the proportions. So if my have a heart is more looking like this, still kind of have, an, have a heart shape, I just need the same elements, the same uh, ingredients in the recipe, but I can stretch them now. So I can make a, let's do a huge tragus. Then a small ear opening, kind of pronounced anti-tragus. Concha. I'll give you a moment to catch up, maybe. Then helix coming from inside here. Wrapping around, it's getting quite thin there. A little separation. And the end of the anti-helix. I read now before doing this live stream, I read Fun with a Pencil again. And on the very last page, he says actually that nature is the greatest teacher. So with all this strong imagination, keep coming back to nature. Because if you're only doing this and repeating your own recipes, everything will start looking the same. And you're not expanding your visual library. So on the subway, for example, or on the bus, is a great place to study people's ears. People have crazy ears. You'll start noticing when you look at them. Super interesting shapes and configurations. So let's add ears to all of these. And let's go extreme on some of them. Let's add huge ears to this guy. And this is actually great because we have to draw an ear now, not from the side, but from the front. So from the front, we see more tragus. We see the helix. A little bit of concha. Something like this. And maybe he has asymmetrical ears, like myself. <laughs> and this one is pointing more forward. So it's more a side view. Okay. Now here it's pretty much from the side. So bottom of nose, bottom of eyebrows, which we don't have yet. Let's give him kind of a so what look. Hmm. Could be even higher up. I'll go more stylized. So the eyebrows are now floating off the head, which is fine. We can do whatever we want. But I'll still stop the ear somewhere up there. And I've drawn mostly here detached earlobes. So let's give him an attached earlobe. Okay, this line is suggesting that there could be hair there. So I'm go going to add hair, very short stubbly hair. So it's just kind of a tone. And to indicate the stubbles, we can stubble the contour like this. If your construction lines are getting in the way, you can erase them once you've placed your features. So you're seeing more just the design by itself. A 
think he needs tire dyes. Okay, I feel like we should go into a little bit more detail on eyes and noses as well. But let's draw a few more ears. And see, I'm, I'm repeating myself a bit too much. All the ear shapes are kind of pointy up here. So let's change it up. Or let's push it further. <laughs> let's do that. Let's give them elf ears. which are still ears, so they still have the same building blocks. They're still gonna have a helix, which is this outside part, and an anti-helix, which is gonna be in here. And a trigus, anti-trigus, and earlobe. This earlobe feels a bit too fleshy for an elf, so let's slim it down. In general, elves, hmm. Yeah, elves, when I think about it, have more of these thin pointy shapes, even for the shape of the face itself. And then the ears will come off. And their clothing, everything is kind of streamlined and slim. So this is a very round elf, which is kind of interesting. So we could play off or emphasize that fleshy roundness in some parts and this ear is quite uh, far back if I make the lines too dark it's going to come forward towards me and I don't want that I want the nose to be the closest to us so the nose should have the most contrast I can do that with the outline a bit by pushing the nostrils even darker and keeping that ear quite light. So I'm still drawing all the elements, but I'm keeping the contrast down to push it back away from us. Also, he's missing a chin. So <laughs> let's give him a thick chin. And some chest hair. And what kind of hairstyle? Hmm. Punk elf. Yeah. And a little earring. There we go. So what else? How else can we vary things? You can think of shape like circle, rectangle, triangle. This guy has some triangular and circular elements. Here, everything is round so far. So let's try making the ears round as well. So I draw tragus, ear opening, anti-tragus, but everything in a round kind of line. The other ear is going to be more from the front. So we're not going to see much of it. Mustaches are great for personality as well. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's take a bit of a closer look at noses here. You can think of a nose as kind of a wet sh shape. But then cut it in three sections. And you start closer in, going out like this. And then back in for the second segment. And then back out for the third. So this third segment here is going to be the ball of the nose. And the first segment here is the nasal bone on the skull, which I think I have a skull image here. Yeah. So this section here is that first section there. And maybe we can do this here uh, to place, place the ear. We go from eyebrow and from bottom of the nose and then follow where the jaw ends which actually cuts the whole head in half so that's a really useful line that's the middle of your head and the ear is going to attach here go to the same height as the eyebrow and go to the same lower level as the nose And this hole here is the ear opening. So the tragus is on top of that. Then the anti-tragus, concha coming around. All of this will be slightly shaded in almost every case. Helix, anti-helix. So this thing here has volume. That's the anti-helix in there. So the nose, from a profile view, it comes out, then usually there's a little change of direction right here where the bone ends. You go down a little bit. From a front view, let's do this here. Cut that into thirds. So we're coming down and out to that end point of the nose, which is right here. And then we come back in from a profile. We come down slightly and then the ball of the nose is here. So we go back out. And then add the wings of the nose and you have yourself a nose from the front. When you draw it from the side, it's really important to go up and do something like this. Sorry, there's the text underneath, but I hope you can see a little bit. I'm gonna do a new nose next to it. Uh, actually, we're here. If 
we place a nose here we go up a bit to that point which is the edge of the bone we come down a bit and then out for the ball of the nose and then the wing of the nose we have to do something like this sorry it's too small again I think it's the wing of the nose right a little hook shape like that would be good to have some photo reference but I don't right now this is that fleshy part I was speaking about before, right here, between the two uh, nostrils. And that then comes down into the... I, it's called... not funnel... philtrum. Philtrum, and then the lips. And since we are on that path, there's something interesting happening with the lips there as well. So, philtrum right here. And then let's go very simple. Center line between the upper lip and lower lip. There's that middle part of the bird, this thing here. So that comes down a bit further than the middle point, center line, center line, and usually goes up slightly. Lower lip, which would be one of these two stretched ovals from the side. And just above the top lip, there's a form that comes out slightly like this. I exaggerated here a bit, but it doesn't go philtrum lip. It goes, I hope you can understand this. It goes philtrum, slight bump, and then lip. Pretty subtle, but I hope that's useful. So what else about the nose? This one, two, three is really quite useful. I have a schematic image of a nose here. It's printed quite light, but you can see the construction overall. Right, one useful thing also from the top here, which would be this part, we can go up to the glabella. The glabella is that little part between your eyebrows. So it goes up, usually catches a bit of half tone there. And then that's the end of the nasal bone. So we go out and then in. And then out again for the ball of the nose. This is an image by Michael DeFeo. He's a character designer, I think. These are also quite nice to understand the different sections. And there are many ways to break down these forms and make sense of them in your own mind. So I do it with these thirds, which I learned at the Russian Academy in Florence. And Michael seems to do it in two parts. But he also has the glabella up here as a separate part. So we're still missing some noses. I don't know how your drawings are doing, but we can connect.
And again, as, you, as long as you have these elements, you can stretch noses. You can make a nose that's very sharp and pointy. It's a mustache, I think. There. Or you can make a nose that's more fleshy. Oh, yes. Eyes. Let's do something. The far eye. I struggled with that so much for so long and until I found a really nice technique or trick. So if we have two eyes, and probably I learned this also from Loomis. I think so. If you have two eyes and you're looking at them from the front, well, they're just going to be quite symmetrical, which is nice and simple. On average human proportions, you fit about one eye between the two eyes. And then to the edge of the head, you can fit two more eyes. So this head should be something like this. To be natural looking. But that is not the point I was trying to make. <laughs> the point is when we're not looking straight ahead, head at the face but the face is turned what do you do with this far eye how do you make it look not terrible <laughs> and the trick let's lighten that slightly i'm drawing a bit bigger than is comfortable for me so you can see it better um Let's say we have a nose that's going this way, which means the whole head is kind of like this. Right, we're looking, the head is looking to our left. This eye is easy and my method is to start with the corner of the eye go up a bit and over so this is the bottom plane of the upper eyelid then draw the upper eyelid decide how thick or thin i want it to be then iris and pupil and then top plane of the lower lid There's that eye. But if I draw that same way over here, I'm drawing that foreshortened eye as if I'm looking at it straight. It's not going to look good. So the way to do it is to draw a line like this. And over here, that's actually the thickness of the eyelid that we're looking into. So the eyelid, let's see if I can draw this. It's doing something like this. We can see the outside over here, but we can see the inside there. Then pupil, or sorry, iris and bring the iris on that eye over to the right a bit instead of drawing it 
in the center. I want more space here, more white space and shift the, the iris a bit to the right. Pupil and lower lid. Now this eye is foreshortened and I've drawn it differently from this eye. You have to practice that a bunch to make it intuitive. But it's very useful. So here that will get some extra thickness. Yeah, I've drawn these all pretty frontally. Here this is too small to really see. Okay, we are we've done an hour. I think I would like to keep these short, shortish, like an hour, because if we do it two hours, then it's a big commitment to show up to these for you and for me as well. So let me see if there are any questions and let's do five minutes or so of questions and then call it a day, call it a session. I hope you learned some useful things about drawing heads and faces. Columnella, that's it. Septum, huh, I wonder if these are synonyms. Both sound right, yeah. Okay, right, now we get into the lag issue. So let me type into the chat. And I should learn to do this before. <laughs> when I'm getting ready for questions, I should type into the chat whether you have any questions so that you have time to catch up with the lag. And that's part of this live stream experience. Can I give assignments? Uh, sure, draw a page of heads. Here's a page of Loomis with the steps that we have just done. And I hope YouTube doesn't pull this video now for <laughs> copyright infringement. I'm, um, what's the word? Advertising <laughs> the Loomis book. Does the ear have an angle when we construct how do you mean? You can bring the construction back here. Where did I find the constructive head? I learned it. Uh, in Florence, like in person, and I memorized it. Actually, have, there was a test to draw the eye, nose, mouth, and ear from imagination, from memory. And we were graded on that assignment. So I learned it and I can still do it. This is my version of the ear construction. And there's Michael DeFeo's again, slightly different, but you can see it similar volumes there. Sham, I'm not sure what you mean by the, the, uh, the ear having an angle.
uh, about where to look for for other resources for this type of drawing there's a russian teacher by the name of mogilyevtsev He has a book on constructive anatomy that's been translated into English. I think the website is forart.org, but I'm not sure. I might be wrong on that. Sham, you have seen people draw a slant line and construct. I'm not sure what you're referring to there, but there are many ways, whatever works for you. So try out different methods, different processes, and you'll find your own, especially as you do the, this over and over, the repetition, you'll find shortcuts that make things more direct for you where it's less thinking about how to do it properly and more just direct expression okay so i think with that let's finish for today uh, i should mention if you're not signed up for the shading course join us and we have a discord community there theshadingcourse.com you can find out more if you're a BAA student I love seeing your work on the BAA Slack group and you can reach me I guess through the chat at theshadingcourse.com or Facebook or Instagram although I'm not very active on those places but I hope this was fun I enjoyed it and I'm going to do some more heads now and we'll do this again on Monday and I don't know yet what's going to happen next week but we'll find something to enjoy all right take care everyone thank you for coming see you soon <laughs>